Hey everyone, Big Paulie back for another What's in the Poundland bin video. Oh yes, baby. Here we go again. But, oh please, oh please. Can we please not have some shit like this again? Oh, that was bad. Okay, right, before we get on to choosing this week's title, I had a message recently from one of my viewers who was willing to donate some money for my brother's one in eight marathon challenge that he's doing on behalf of breast cancer now. And they suggested that they would donate £10 to the charity cause if I pick this title up from Poundland and put it in the bin. The what's in the Poundland bin? Bin. <laughs> and I said, why? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it is for a good cause, but I don't think I'm willing to go that far. But I did counter offer them and I said, make it 20 quid. And you've got yourself a deal. So yes, they agreed. So I went into Poundland, my local Poundland in Dover. And they had this on the shelf. <laughs> so this has got to go in the Poundland bin for me to watch and review for you lucky people. Don't know when it will get reviewed, but <laughs> but it's for a good cause. 20 quid towards the charity, so to be perfectly honest, I would have done it for 10. But here we go. Right, okay, so I am going to shove this now in the bin. Okay, so there's the Poundland bin. There's the movie. In it goes. It'll get swished about a bit, probably fall to the bottom, and then we'll end up picking it out at some day, at some time. <laughs> Hopefully not too soon. Right, so that's that out of the way. Also, a few people have asked me what I intend to do when the bin, the trash bin, is full up. Am I just going to throw them out? Well, actually, no. They are going to be donated to charity. <laughs> I'm just thinking, donating them to charity. People in charities are in, having a hard time as it is to have to watch this shit. <laughs> but hopefully someone somewhere will get some enjoyment out of it. So what we'll do, when the bin is completely full up, I'll hold a contest... And you can pick uh, whatever charity it is, whether it's like um, British Heart Foundation, PDSA, you know, for cats and that. Um, any other charity, Scope, stuff like that. Um, and then we'll do a random picker. And then we'll find one and uh, we'll donate all of those Blu-rays to the charity shop. Hopefully there's a charity shop in my town for that charity. And then I'll video going in and just saying, here, yeah, I'll have this lot because I fucking don't want it. <laughs> so, yes. So that's what's going to happen with the crap that's in the bin. Somebody else can have my crap. <laughs> right, OK. So let's not waffle on anymore because we better choose a title. So, oh, here we go. Turn round. Oh, yes. <laughs> Right, I'm not picking that one. <laughs> not yet, anyway. Are you ready, folks? Let's do it. And let's dig down deep. Oh, let's go right down the, down the side, but the back this time. 
Oh, oh, God, I've got a bloody hand stuck. <laughs> oh, I'm wedged by Blu-rays. Okay, all right, I've got something. Oh, <laughs> yes, I've got something. <laughs> Here we go. Okie dokie. Oh, bloody hell. Bloody bin's falling apart. <laughs> That's not good. Right, okay. Do, do you know what? We got to a point, I don't even want to fucking look at what I've got. Oh, okay. Rupture. Naomi Numi. Numi Rapace. <laughs> okay. Uh, from the creator of American Sniper. Oh, I love American Sniper. Secretary. Never seen it. And Hard Candy. Never seen it. Facial Fears. It's a 15 certificate. Engrossing and highly original, brilliantly disorientating. 97 minutes, so again, not a long one. Uh, Peter Stormare's in it. Oh, well, that's good. And Michael Chiklis. Okay, so... Rupture? It is called Rupture, isn't it? Rupture. Okay, so let's give that a go. <laughs> it can't be any worse than last week's. So let's stick it in the old player then. Right, okie dokie. So let's open up the tray. Oh, what have we got? Have we got any pictures? Oh, yes. Oh, there we go. Uh, so these Poundland Blu-rays have all got artwork, whereas we get major titles like bloody Marvel titles, which is just crappy blue or grey. So anyway, in we go, rupture, there it goes, and then, in we go. Okay, film is in, ready to go. What have we got? I've got my nice um, tropical fruits sugar-free cold drink to be getting on with. And there's a snack, I've got a packet of sea salt and vinegar pop chips. Very nice. So let's get stuck in to the film then, shall we? And hope it don't turn out like last week. Oh yes, here we go then. Okay, so Numi Rapace, I think that's how you pronounce it, aka Prometheus's Elizabeth Shaw, plays Renee Morgan, a recently separated single mum who lives on an average American suburban street with her son. Uh, it looks at the start that her house on this nice quiet street is under some kind of surveillance. Uh, they occasionally show some video footage from inside the house. Uh, also, she's also been observed by Michael Chiklis, who's parked in a car. Creepy. So, after dropping off her son at her estranged husband's place, she finds herself getting a flat tyre on a road somewhere in the middle of nowhere and welcoming the help of two strangers who offer to help repair her puncture. Big mistake. She's tasered and bundled into the back of a van and gagged with some black tape and cuffed before being knocked out unconscious by an injection of some sort. What do you expect letting two strangers at a roadside help you out? Anyway, she later wakes to find herself strapped to this big metal gurney and being wheeled around the corridors of this grotty looking medical facility. Grey Sloan Memorial, it ain't. She becomes aware there are others uh, as she hears people's screams and these weird, horrible drill noises. She's also experimented on with some weird orange tango type stuff called G1012X. Plus she's asked some weird questions as well. The Oddball Group experimenting on Rene is led by of course Michael Chiklis himself who it seems all he wants to do 
is some really weird face rubbing thing. <laughs> now apparently the G1012X is meant to alter the DNA of the human subject in the hopes of, shall we say, mending the human race as we try to destroy it. So all in all, bit of a kind of a medical experimental invasion of the body snatchers type of thing. Now one thing about rupture, um, taking aside the beginning of it, which is all like suburban house streets and that kind of thing, the outside world, it's a very claustrophobic movie, all set in this like medical lab. Um, and there's lots of weird noises. For instance, the door, whenever someone comes in and out of the door, there's this big futuristic type metal uh, locking mechanism and it goes <laughs> every time someone comes in or someone comes out. Very effective, gets on your nerves after a while. <laughs> but you sometimes you hear it there and then, you know it's the room that she's actually in. Or you might hear it off into the distance. <laughs> so you know... It's one of the other rooms with one of the other patients in. Uh, so that was very good. That was very well use of sounds. Also, something that kind of like almost freaked me out was the effect that this G1012X serum has when they're trying to get someone to rupture, to become a better human, kind of like a hybrid uh, to take over the planet. It all becomes very... The face becomes very distorted. And they end up looking like the elephant man. That sort of thing. Um, very well done. But it's very disturbing. Okay, so runtime was 97 minutes. Which was perfect. It didn't need to be any longer than 97 minutes. Uh, the pacing is really good. Really good pacing. Um, and I'm sure that probably some of my skin and some of my nails has actually been chewed off because it is kind of an edge of the seat gripping type of film once she's been taken. Uh, and she's, she's trying to escape this facility, um, trying to get out of the restraints, you know, the same way Linda Hamilton did in Terminator 2, that sort of thing. Uh, and she finds herself managing to get out, but up into like the air vents, you know, John McLean style. <laughs> so she's crawling around and what's really good is that while she's crawling around all of these little air ducts is that every now and again she comes to another room with another patient in it and you see the kind of experiments that they're actually going through. So that was very cleverly done. So on to the picture and sound. Now the picture was good. Uh, it was a clear picture. Very minimal of grain. Um, and, but it was all set in like this dirty, dusky, horrible underground kind of like bunker type lab. There were a lot of oranges, a lot of like rust colours, like you would imagine very rusty walls type thing. Um, but uh, the colours were really good. They were very, very authentic for the location she was. It's not like this all bright walls, medical you know, like hospital type of thing. So um, that's really good. Yeah, so it's a very dark environment. Not too dark that you can't see anything, but it's just not outside and not brightly lit. So it's kind of a dark, dank squalor of a lab uh, and corridors. And the sound is a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1, which was upscaled to Neuro. The sound was good. The sound was very good. As I say, with the clanking of those door bolts, it echoed all around the room and it echoed behind you. Uh, and there's these weird other sounds, not just screams, but lots of use of the bass. And there's um, these other sounds that kind of like reverberate around you. So you do hear sounds from the left at the back, from the right at the back. Lots of dialogue, crisp, clear dialogue lots of sound so the soundtrack was a really good soundtrack so the disc itself is region b locked so it probably won't work outside of the uk 
uh, and there were, unfortunately there were no extras. Um, I would have liked to have seen some extras to see how they did this whole underground facility and and uh, uh, and the effects on the face um, when um, Numi's character was um, kind of like morphing, rupturing kind of thing. I mean, is that how you say her name? Is it Numi Rapace? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but Numi Rapace. I know she's, what is it? She's Swedish or something, a Swedish background, but I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. But um, she was robbed in Prometheus. I mean, she was great in Prometheus, and I kind of feel like, damn, we never got to see the rest of her in Alien Covenant, which I was a little bit upset with, so... I really enjoyed her character as a, as a Elizabeth Shaw. But yes, uh, so I'm glad we had a good one this week. We had actually had a really good one. I'm pleasantly surprised by that because I've, ne I've never really heard of it before. Had no idea what it was about. So yes, I was really pleasantly surprised with that. So on a rating out of 10, I'm actually going to give Rupture 7 out of 10. Okay, so the question now, as the projector actually blinds me, remember, don't turn that way. Do we put it up on the shelf, or is it going down there in the old rejection bin? Well, you've probably guessed by now, 7 out of 10. I'll show you where I'm going to put it. That's right, folks. <laughs> no, that doesn't deserve to go down there with all that shit down there. This is going up on the shelf and we'll join the others. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's much, much, much better What's in the Poundland bin and uh, was pleasantly surprised by my little review because I was. <laughs> so hopefully we'll get some more continued good luck on the next films and uh, give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next Sunday, everyone. Bye. If you'd like to support my channel, you can donate using the link below. All funds received, no matter the amount, will be greatly appreciated and will be administered back into the channel for future improvement. Thank you for viewing this video and subscribing to my channel. Blimey, I got through that in one take. Result.